everyone gets their own prop. But Doctor Strange gets nothing? That doesn't seem fair. Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I love finding affordable ways to DIY a variety of things. Money can't buy everything, except maybe figures. I love collecting figures and recreating iconic scenes. Every figure deserves to shine on my display. So every week I ask myself the same question, and answer it by creating something I'm proud of. Join my weekly adventure by subscribing to my channel. Leave your feedback and suggestions down below. I often get inspired by your comments, and I hope I can inspire you too. Last week, I customized my WandaVision Scarlet Witch figure to recreate her look in the Multiverse of Madness. It's one of my best customs. Check that video out if you haven't already. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is finally out. I've already done Wong and America Chavez, so it's time for me to fix the Doctor himself. Okay, this may sound weird, but this figure looks like a candle to me. Just like Wong, I find these figures a little waxy. I think it's because the fabric has this plastic sheen to it. But other than that, I think this is a pretty decent figure, and I want to make it better. So, let's, let's deconstruct, deconstruct this, this figure. figure. First of all, I like the colors on the figure, but they look a bit flat. If I squint my eyes and look at the figure, the two blue shades kind of blend into one. The details on his boots and his forearms are also not very noticeable. The same goes for the eye of Agamotto. It just looks plasticky and dull. His belt, on the other hand, has too much distracting details. And for the cloak, it's finally not orange. <laughs> there are a lot of molded texture, but the vibrant red makes it hard to see the details. And finally, the face. Looks a lot like Benedict Cumberbatch, but his hairline is a bit too high, and his goatee is too light, making his head look top heavy. This figure doesn't really need a complete makeover, just minor touch ups to bring out the details and layers of his outfit. So, can I make it? First, let's start with the blue. Strange now has this symbol on his torso. And I want to make it pop more. So I'm going to add a wash of black over the areas around the symbol. I'm diluting the paint with water so it's very runny and won't dry opaque. This will increase the contrast and mattify the texture, making it look more fabric-like. Ooh, almost missed the two areas near his collarbones. The effect is very subtle, but it's working. Now I'm going to apply a very thin layer of light blue over the symbol and the edges of the rope to further emphasize the contrast and mattify the rest of the outfit. Next, I added a bit of warm brown to all the leather parts. The original color is pretty neat, but it's hard to see the details when the color is this dark. So the lighter brown is going to bring out some of the molded details, making them easier to see. Lighter colors generally grab your attention before the darker ones. So that's why the belt sticks out so much. Those light bluish pieces on this belt stick out like a sore thumb due to them being the lightest in color. So I'm going to quote unquote push them back by making them darker and blending them with the belt. I also applied a thin layer of brown over the red bits on this belt too. I like the red, but I needed to not take the attention away from the face. And finally, I'm going to brush some brown onto his boots to add a bit of color and make them look dirtier. Alright, let's fix the eye of Agamotto. Starting with a nice layer of gold. Then I'm dotting a bit of black into the crevices to add more shading to the eye of Agamotto. This is kind of difficult to do. The holes are so small. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now onto the cloak of levitation. I want to bring out the details on the underside of the cloak. A wash of black over it should bring out all the details. Then I'm going to add a bit of shading to the other side with purple. I don't want to use black on this side because I want this side to have a velvet-like texture. So black wouldn't really look right. I'm applying the purple onto the textured areas. Subtly differentiating the textures by changing the shade. 
Very subtle. Too subtle. Okay, I need more shading. So I'm gonna use the blue this time. Kinda like what I did to all my Spider-Man. I want this blue to blend and fade nicely onto the cloak. I personally don't think black is an easy color to blend with. It usually makes the color very muddy and difficult to blend. The blue on the other hand is much gentler and can be built up slowly. Alright, let's do the magic effects. When I was fixing Wong last time, I was experimenting and figuring out ways to add more dimension to the magic effects. And I found that adding a bit of red around the rims of the effect and rubbing a bit of gold onto the front side worked pretty well. It creates this natural looking glowing effect without compromising the translucency of the piece. Okay, time to work on the head. This is such a weird head. It's clearly Benedict Cumberbatch. But his chin looks so strange. The goatee is throwing everything off. But before I work on the goatee, let me add a bit of color to his face first. Then I'm gonna work on this hairline. I need to visually shrink his forehead by bringing his hairline down. This is gonna be tricky because it needs to look natural. I can't just redefine the hairline with a solid black. I need to make sure it doesn't look too obvious. The goal is to make it look like nothing was done to the hairline. Speaking of hair, time to fix the goatee. His facial hair should match his hair. So I'm gonna make his goatee darker. I have to use black this time because I can only add so many strokes before it becomes a blob of color. Mm, this is too stressful, so I'm gonna have to do it off screen. Okay, the goatee is done. I wish it was a bit thicker, but I don't want to risk it, so I'm gonna work on his white hair instead. They are already pretty good on the figure, I just need to define them a bit more. Changing the shape of those white patches slightly, Alright, here's the finished head. The head looks so much more balanced now. It doesn't look top heavy anymore. Okay, before I put the head back on, let me do something else first. All the other Doctor Strange characters got a prop. Wong got the Book of Cagliostro, America Chavez got the portal, Scarlet Witch got her Dark Hold. So I decided to make Strange the box from No Way Home. I know it's not the right movie, but I have to be fair to Doctor Strange. Here it is. Looks pretty cool. Hey, you can now support me on Patreon. I post quite regularly there, from behind the scenes updates to sneak peeks to video breakdowns. Top tier members will receive a DIY 3D mini poster every month. These mini posters look great by themselves, but even cooler next to other mini posters. I love making things, and this is my way to thank my supporters. The link to my Patreon is in the description box down below. Okay, here's the finished figure. His hair looks so much better now. Nothing else drastic happened. All the changes were minor. The goal was to bring out the details of the figure. And I think I did a pretty good job with the Eye of Agamotto and the Cloak of Levitation. I actually really like what I did to the face. It's so minor, but he just looks more normal now. Maybe the secret's all in the goatee. Montage time. This isn't my favorite Doctor Strange design, but this is a pretty good figure. He's very easy to balance and looks very natural in many poses. I was a bit disappointed in the Cloak of Levitation at first because of how loose it is. It just sits on the shoulders. But that actually makes posing a lot more flexible because the cloak kinda adapts to the poses. I think I did a slightly better job with the magic effects this time. The subtle red glow is pretty awesome, and posing with them is super easy. And for the box, it looks pretty cool. I know, wrong movie, but I wanna make a prop for each Doctor Strange character. I don't have the No Way Home Strange but I can give this to Spider-Man. Alright, photo shoot time. Oh, look at that. Just like Wong, 
Doctor Strange no longer looks like a candle to me anymore. He's so much more lifelike after being painted. I think it's because the texture looks correct now. The rope is not as shiny anymore, and the cloak looks like it's made out of a velvet-like material. The belt is way less distracting now too. His sling ring is the only thing that catches your attention. The cloak is interesting. It's like its own character. I didn't like how it sits on the shoulders, but I gotta admit, it looks really dynamic in photos. And the box? It's pretty neat. It doesn't really fit this version of Strange. Uh? A random kid took the box. Anyway, I like this figure a lot more now. I thought the original looked a bit bland. But these photos look amazing. I think it's because a lot of the joints are well hidden. So he looks less like a toy now. What do you think? Do you like what I've done? Let me know down below. Give this video a like and subscribe to see more videos like this. My goal is to reach 10k subs in the near future. And as always, stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.